Hello, everybody. Welcome back into our upholstery shop. We're going to give you another uh, update here on our 66 Suburban. Look at these beautiful seats. As we went over in the last video, these were originally from a Honda Odyssey van. Um, all the trim that we went over is on the table has been clearly assembled. Um, the headrests have been shaved. We were talking last time about putting that foam in there so we don't feel anything. Nice, soft, cushy, no foam feel. Our consoles are built. Seats are completed. It's a fantastic step because being Honda Odyssey seats, I think custom is always, you know, just a little bit of a challenge. Pulse team did a great job. Customer selected all the colors. Everybody's happy. I'm happy. He's happy. Looks incredible. So seats are done. Just some of the details on these seats here. Obviously, being from a Honda Odyssey, we talked about in the last video how we shaved all of our foam up in here. Right now, my hand, granite, your head, whatever back here, real soft, cushy, nothing on there. Still functional here. But coming into our stitching, this is all done by hand. So our upholstery team, we work with the customer. We make a design. We put it on some poster board. Then once we like that, we'll take it. We'll draw it out on a crayon on the leather hide. Um, customer, of course, always makes a decision. This is their car. We don't care what pattern's picked. Between a diamond, a square, you know, double stitch, French seam, whatever it is, this is the pattern the customer likes. So all this template's done by hand. It's a really nice old school way of doing, you know, something where you basically sit here, you draw it, you just put it through a machine, you feed it. So yeah, this diamond stitching here, showing our pattern in here, this is how the customer wanted it shown. You can also make it where it's tucked in and you don't see the thread showing. In this particular case, the thread was selected to be shown. So we took our thread over here, matched our stitching coming down here, and really happy with the way the seats came out. Guys did a great job on it. So on our center console, these come in, we want to make sure these are still functional like they should be. So if you want to have them down when you use your cup holders, great. If you want to flip them up, you know, back in the 60s, obviously a, a thousand people could fit in the Suburban. So when we get these things in, because they're seats from, you know, maybe another junkyard or used on something else, a lot of this stuff might not function. So went and got our fabric we liked in here, got our correct color, customer approved, got our mechanism all working. It's just little stuff too. So now we have obviously functional console. So if you're in here and this is between the seat, Obviously, this matches. Maybe you know you're going on a long road trip, got those big gulps. So it's just little details like that. I know it sounds so basic to have a functional seat. When the seat comes in non-functioning, we'll go through, take care of the mechanism, get our correct color thread, get our correct piece of fabric, stitch that up, and make these functional councils again. So it's all in the details, which we love. We got our seats. They look beautiful. They are done. What's our next step? Next step is going to be door panels. So the next step being on the door panels are, these are pretty rusty. Um, because of, you know, there's multiple levels of an upholstery job. This is a very high end upholstery job. It's not per se the going to SEMA upholstery job. So you'll still see the rusting and pitting, but we want to make sure that this panel lives in Suburban for the next 50 years. So we took a DA, scaled all the rust off, coated it and sealed it. Obviously this is going to last a lot better. We're going to be covering these in a quarter inch of foam. So the finish per se isn't the biggest thing. We just wanted to slow the rust on these. So we got these coated. We got our door handles apart now. These are all stripped and ready. Obviously being older, a lot of the studs will come out. You know, we want to make sure they're good and structural. They're structural, okay, we'll put new studs in here. We're going to clean this down, wrap this, and run the customer stitching across here as he prefers. So we got our door panel design coming. So now we're heading over to our actual door panels getting made. This is a door panel that came in from the car with a very large speaker hole. And obviously it's a little bit of an outdated look. The customer liked to update that. So we're starting to make our leather cards here. So as you can tell, our pattern's been made. Diamonds has been selected by the owner to match his seats. Once again, these are the owner's custom upholstery. Whatever they pick, we're happy with. The stitching is going to be the exposed thread, just like our door panels. And we can see us start to come together now. So basically, this isn't there yet, but this is in the in-between process. This will come together. This will come over to here and set on here. Also, with our padding in here, there will be another piece of foam backed onto here. That was that quarter inch foam I was talking about. Why do you do all that? Well, you want to do it for sound reduction, and you also want to do it just so it's nice, soft, and cushy. On a Suburban, you have a ton of room. You know, maybe a modern Porsche where it's real tighter, so you might not have as much room. You'll not be able to run as much foam, but we can. We're going to go with a circle speaker grill instead of the larger grill there. It'll reduce the opening. The customer would like to keep the style of this. So the door panel is almost being remade with a smaller diamond than this, and we're going to use this more modern leather than what was on here. So the door panel in this case is going to look very similar, just the modern creature comforts of the leather that match and updating the speaker. 
So we're getting close to wrapping up door panels. What is next after door panels? Carpet. So let's head over to our Suburban here and get an idea on what's going on in our carpet. So the great thing about having a 66 Suburban is the value's skyrocketing. They're really cool looking cars. Back in the 60s, you know, people still had, you know, big luxurious cars. These Suburbans were more or less, you know, some were considered delivery trucks. The SUV wasn't what it is today. The problem is in today's aftermarket world, there's not a lot of parts. So we got a pre-molded front carpet from a Chevy truck. Um, you know, working with suppliers, this should be a direct fit, should be good to go. We had to buy yardage, which was the back there, and then we got to make our own carpet, sew our own binding on and fit the carpet. No problem. But for the customer's sake, when you get a pre-molded carpet, it will save time and money for the customer. So now that we got our pre-molded carpet, let's set this in our 66 Suburban and see how it fits. All right, so welcome inside the Suburban. We have our pre-molded carpet in here. We got big gaps over on each side, and we got a big gap over here. Our brights are, of course, controlled the old school way with your foot pedal where you push here. How do you solve this? What's the plan? We need to make a kick panel that comes down in here to cover. But as we can see by our big gap on there, your kick panel, unless you're going to build it out to be three inches out, is going to look goofy being three inches sticking out. And then also over here, if we do three inches coming out to compensate for that gap, we can no longer use our brights. So that makes the truck less functional. That's not cool. Also, our carpet back here is clearly supposed to come back to where that line is. So we're short back here. We don't reach over there. And the part where it's longer coming out the doors, that's always all right. You can always trim that and just run a binding over there. So what that means is, is we got to get more yardage and make our own carpet. Once again, not the end of the world. We do it all the time. But in terms of customers, costs, all that stuff, a pre-molded carpet, this just shows you some of the pre-molded versus the custom carpet. When you do a custom carpet, it lays really nice. Like right now where I have this set, like this is almost like you got to push your foot down and then it's going to keep coming up. But as I push your foot down more, you get more of a gap over there. So then anything else in the aftermarket world, you get what you pay for. Um, I understand the carpets, they're affordable. They are much cheaper than hand doing it, but depending on the type of finish you want, either finish is okay. In this case, um, the customer wants to go with a higher end finish, so we're gonna make our own carpet. We're gonna make our kick panels for up here. We're gonna use our leather to wrap them, and that way our leather on our door panels matches our leather on our kick panels. So we'll get our carpet getting made next, we we'll get our kick panels made. And then after that, we got save the nastiest for last. We got to figure out our headliner up in here. Um, 66 Suburbans also didn't run a headliner back in the day. There is no headliner whatsoever to run for this. So we've been kicking around some ideas back here on the Suburban headliner. And um, without a Suburban headliner being manufactured, plus with our exposed ribbing up in here, the headliner is going to be a bit of a challenge. The upholstery team and the fab team come up with a really cool idea on it. So uh, we're going to kick that around, make sure we're happy with the plan, get the customer's approval. And then uh, we'll get going the headliner video next. All right, so thanks for following along. Um, stay tuned as the upholstery shop keeps going on the interior of this beautiful 6'6 Suburban. And uh, we'll get you updated in the next video.